for me, that's what I've learned. Leadership is powerful, and but at the same time, it's an understatement of what is being portrayed in the media. Yeah. And I think media, society, maybe the Western culture. I don't know how to go to the East because I don't know much so in there and I, I haven't taken the time to study. But what I know of is from my African background and being raised in North America. It teaches a very different structure of leadership. A completely different structure. Almost hierarchy. Like a hierarchy. Yeah. Not necessarily something that's clear. Mm-hmm. And having sort of. Just based on those definitions you gave, mm-hmm. the idea of guidance isn't in leadership. It's more like uh, towing, just pulling people along. Yes. Getting them to stay in their place so that mm-hmm. you can be up there and they can be below. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not necessarily that growing, nurturing type of uh, uh, leadership that I guess most people have grown up with in different cultures. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, no. Yeah, I, I so find that concept very interesting. It's just like, why are people drawn to it? Mm-hmm. Uh, what makes a good leader? Mm-hmm. And why is it necessary for people in general? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. completely agree. Um, these are very important questions, and I think we need to start addressing it. Yeah. Because it's not something that's really taught in schools. No. And even even at school, it gets discussed by historical figure. They talk about historical historical figures that were leaders, and I put that in air quotes because, yeah, yeah. listening and reading that, you're like, that is the definition of leadership. I think based on the way I learned leadership in high school and middle school, it seems more like accomplishment chasing Mm -hmm. rather than the everlasting effect it has on the people that were being led yes right yes yes and that's what we're talking about uh on this episode those who are just joining we were having a conversation my guest phil and i were having a conversation about leadership why is it so important what is it? And of course, how do we define that? And how do we even teach our children that? And pass on the knowledge and skill of leadership. And both Phil and I try to come up with a definition. And based on our own personal experience of what we've observed and how we were taught by our parents or our grandparents and we both come to an understanding that it's a complicated thing <laughs> yeah very, compl- <laughs> very complicated not so straightforward as you think it is no and believe me i tried to look for a definition of leadership and when i what i found i found two definitions that were pretty contradictory <laughs> they both addressed some sort of company relationship yeah an employee <laughs> management, not necessarily any other aspects of leadership. Yes. That, I don't know, I think I've grown to think are important. <laughs> but I don't So, mean, turn it upside down for you. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if they're actually important, but exploring it is worthwhile, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's the strange thing, because when you say leadership, from what I've understood in the mainstream... People immediately think about either a hierarchy in terms of a king yeah. and subjects or presidents and country yeah. or just someone standing at top telling other people what to do. Yes. Right. That's what I've understood. And yet the definition that I've come to read even uh, from Forbes magazine's uh, article in April 2013 spoke about motivation 
motivating workers to work for a common goal of for a company. N not speaking about the hierarchy. That's what prompted us to kind of like say, whoa, 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 whoa. It brought a pretty good discussion for us to keep talking about it. And we thought, you know what, let's share it with our audience and have people chime in. What they understood or come to understand as uh, leadership. And Phil, you can go ahead. Well, my first couple of thoughts of leadership are always about my relationship with leadership. And the question of, like, uh, what have I always done when the opportunity has come? Because that, in some ways, reflects what I believe leadership to be. Mm -hmm. And whenever the question has come up, I feel like, and I think you said this last week, too, is that you've always shied away, right? Because mm -hmm. leadership, I think, isn't just, like I said earlier, barking orders. Mm -hmm. But I feel like at the end of having led someone, you feel like they should grow or outgrow you. Yes. Right? So then the reason why I mostly shied away from a lot of leadership type positions is maybe I never had the confidence mm -hmm. or felt like I wasn't wise enough to guide people. Mm -hmm. Not just tell people what to do. I can do that all day. Mm -hmm. I tell that <laughs> to my little brothers and sisters. <laughs> if I don't want to do something, I can tell someone else to do it. Yes. But there's a difference. Like You, do, you want someone to leave. Mm-hmm. Your leadership experience, mm -hmm. not needing you as a leader, should mm -hmm. that situation arise. Mm -hmm. and I think that's what leadership is. You mm -hmm. only a leader is someone who is a guide in times of crisis mm -hmm. and guides so that next time a similar crisis exists, people won't need you again. Mm -hmm. But it seems like our current definition and our current examples of leadership uh, put leaders in the place to guide people through all sorts of crises repeatedly mm -hmm. regardless and at the end of it people haven't learned anything except for complete and utter reliance on the leader yes so then if they don't hear their leader say x then thinking for themselves is mm -hmm. not part of the program which yeah. i'm not sure if that's leadership per that's se. not leadership that's almost like dictatorship yeah and a sense of uh creating a dependency yeah it's more like a dependency yeah a dependency where you have I, and forgive me for using this word followers become dependent on the quote unquote leader yeah. to direct their thoughts to direct their actions to direct their belief systems and looking at leadership like that is almost frightening yeah it's frightening that a human being would adhere to be led that way yeah because I, I as a person mm -hmm. who has allowed himself to be led mm -hmm. in that way specifically mm -hmm. i find that the reason why I had allowed myself to be led that way mm -hmm. is because it was it was easy. Yes. Like I didn't have to think. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have to accept <laughs> any responsibility for the outcomes afterwards. Yes. So in addition to shying away from leadership mm -hmm. in the past because I didn't feel like I was a good enough guide, mm -hmm. I believe another part of it was because... I wasn't sure that I was capable of uh, dealing with the responsibilities. Because the mm -hmm. thing is, if somebody else leaves and then somebody else makes a mistake, mm -hmm. well, that's on them. Even if I'm following their orders, that's yes. on them. Mm -hmm. right? But if I'm leading and mm -hmm. somebody else makes a mistake, then their mistakes are on me. Yes. Right? Because as a teacher, and, and, and I think the reason why leadership was important was because last week, in that conversation of change, mm -hmm. there was like a sort of element of accountability. Yes. For the aspects of, or for the consequences that occurred mm -hmm. when you stepped into the unknown, right? Yes. And as a leader, like essentially you're leading yourself mm -hmm. when you decide to change. Mm -hmm. Right? So that concept of leadership is very important. And more than just your relationship with other people, it's, 
important with your relationship to yourself because mm-hmm. it's another way to address your readiness to deal with unforeseen consequences. Yes. Right? So uh, if you examine your relationship with re- leadership, sometimes you can see that accountability and see how you uh, handle accountability or how you wield accountability or Mm -hmm. how you express accountability. Mm -hmm. Right? Would that be accountability in terms of the decisions you made due to what you understand about the roles that you're taking? And would that also be accurate to say the responsibility of what that brings? Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Sorry, guys. Uh... Yeah, a lot of times, uh, if you're uh, cognizant about what it means to make a decision for yourself and for others, then you approach leadership with a certain sense of, uh, I don't know if it's reverence or apprehension, but uh, some people just enjoy recklessly making decisions for other people Mm -hmm. it seems like to me and I have like a I'm not sure if I have the right relationship with leadership all the time Mm -hmm. so hearing from other people would help put my ideas of leadership into perspective Mm -hmm. but I feel like you can't if you understand uh, that your actions have consequences and why you're ready to accept it Mm -hmm. then you can slowly from there expand as to why other people Mm -hmm. should accept the consequences of your decision yes and once you understand that that allows you to step into that leadership role Mm -hmm. a bit better if you don't understand it and you still move forward I feel like you're being reckless in some ways I agree I agree and I think that type of uh, reckless leadership can be almost dangerous yeah I think that's because you're putting not only yourself as risk but others yeah and the group that you're leading because you're making decisions without the accountability and the responsibility of the weight yeah of that decision and from what I have learned growing so far is recognizing how that decision trickles down and what it's going to do and the meaning of the decisions and fair enough you can't predict everything that Mm -hmm. may happen as a result of the the decisions but you can actually okay so here here's a disclaimer Phil has his child here (laughs) and it's a baby so those of you who heard a little gas it's a baby letting out gas okay it's not the adult (laughs) <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, we can blame the baby for that one. <laughs> and it's a a newborn, so they they have they're comfortable with themselves. They do what they they have to do. So yeah. if you hurt that, forgive us. <laughs> but it's not us, okay? We're the adults. We learn how to manage. Babies don't. <laughs> oh, man. Uh... In anyway. terms of that reckless leadership, yes. I mean, I hate to use this example, but I guess Trump is essentially the poster child for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in some ways, uh, uh, I think the biggest thing about what happened was that people stopped talking to each other. Yeah. And when you have a reckless leader, that's perhaps the most insidious thing that can happen is that because they don't understand the weight of their actions and the consequences of their actions and just do whatever it takes for them, A, to stay in power or for them to have people listen to them and stay in that hierarchy, Mm -hmm. you create this chain where the people you're leading no longer communicate with each other or hear each other out Mm -hmm. to produce new productive ideas. And that's Mm -hmm. you want them to grow at the end of it. Mm -hmm. Like I said earlier, if you come out a leader and people haven't grown, Mm-hmm. then I don't think you led them properly. Mm-hmm. So I think the most problematic thing mm-hmm. from that whole experience with Trump 
was essentially that as a group we didn't really grow from anything Mm -hmm. we didn't learn from anything and we stopped talking to each other regardless of what side you were on right and Mm -hmm. and i only use that because i feel like regardless of what country you're in and that was an experience we could all look at Mm -hmm. and realize that the sense of leadership is not correct Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. regardless of what side you're on there's something uh, broken about it because mm-hmm. like I said I don't I don't think anybody grew from that last year yeah we hope um, I I on the other hand because of my own perspective and my belief system yeah I hope we've grown I'm hoping this is my optimistic <laughs> nature yeah. that I hope we've grown as a nation I hope we've learn something the world has learned something yeah i'm hoping yeah um that is the stance i take that i'll just keep holding out for hope (laughs) yeah hope is good good. um and i've heard uh your perspective i've heard from many different people with the same sentiment that they they haven't seen but i'm gonna hold on and keep hoping yeah. that a time will come and with anything growth sometimes doesn't show up until much later when you look back and you're like oh okay all right something is different this time okay so baby's also making the, the, her his noise so yeah <laughs> so i guess that's another thing about leadership that Mm -hmm. sometimes like I said from my own experiences is that sometimes you go in thinking if even if you have the definition I gave earlier Mm -hmm. one mistake could be that you go in thinking that you know how people are going to grow yeah from your leadership experience Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like you have to go in knowing how people are going to benefit yes but sometimes I guess leaders also don't choose to be leaders yeah they're made leaders by the people around them Yes, yes. And, and I I've recognized that too. Sometimes that's very scary. Because mm-hmm. you, you have no idea what influence you're having mm-hmm. and whether or not it's right. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, maybe to be a leader, you don't necessarily need to know that. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And you're not even taking into account the impact. Yeah. The impact of the perspective you're bringing to the table. Yeah. And that, I think... Can create a sense of disconnect. Yeah. Uh, in anything, I know with my line of work, when I am working with a client and within treatment, I am constantly looking for what is the outcome of this? What is the purpose? And usually I would explain it to the client and say, I'm hoping this will be or based on the goal that you have specified that you would like to achieve, this is going to put you in that direction. I would explain that. But when it comes to leadership, I think a lot of that gets lost. Yeah. It's not communicated. It's not even recognized. No. At all. And it brings the question in mind, how could you not? Notice that it's not producing anything favorable. Well, because I think the thing is like uh, leadership isn't this thing that you do. Uh, I want to say abstractly mm-hmm. from the action that you're doing. Mm-hmm. So while you're leading people, you're you're also in the thick of things, right? Which mm-hmm. is where I guess great leaders differ from everyone else Mm -hmm. because people I've seen in the past with great leaders almost have this like third person view of their actions yes right so the rest of us who on occasion rise to be leaders Mm -hmm. and other occasions fail to see that we're just mimicking leadership Mm -hmm. I think the difference is that not being able to see ourselves in that third person view mm-hmm. while acting things it's easy to get caught up in whatever you're doing mm-hmm. 
And mm-hmm. it's easy to get caught up in the idea that you're making the right decisions. It's mm-hmm. easy to get caught up in that feeling of everybody should be listening to me. And it's also easy to get caught up in the stress of the responsibility of yes. what you're doing. Yes. Right? Yes. And how do you not notice it? Because at the end of the day, we're still humans. Like the, the, the definition of leadership, mm-hmm. when done correctly, I suppose, mm-hmm. would have this almost godlike ability to uh, view oneself mm-hmm. objectively. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, we're all humans yes. trying to be leaders. Mm-hmm. And that cap- capacity sometimes is lost. Yes. Simply because like we react to things before we think. Yeah, yeah, and I think you you hit it on the nail. It's the reactive nature nature of a person who operates in the ego, because ego does not recognize stop and listen process, and then come up with an understanding. It reacts. And then I don't even know if ego takes the time after reacting to think, well, I don't think this was the correct thing to do. No. no. It's just constantly an offensive. Yeah. Offensive or go, gets defensive, depending on what is coming at them. Yeah. And ego, and so people react that way. And sometimes people who regard themselves as leaders, I sometimes think they forget that they have another choice they immediately go to the reactive mode and attack and I hear this even in children when you see children in a playground and and I've done um, supervising in a playground and watching children where you will see, and you see little kids, second and third grade, fourth grade kids. I'm the leader, follow the leader. I hear this with children. And then the leader said, no, 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 you guys have to listen to me. I am the leader. You do this, you do this. And they're pointing. And I'm looking, I'm like, wow, to that child, the idea of leadership is bossing. Yeah. Telling everybody what to do. And it always baffles me because growing up, my grandmother taught me leadership and she didn't even call it leadership. She just said, when you are with people, no matter what is going on, take the time to hear them. Just listen to what everybody has to say. So I remember growing up, Anything would happen, and sometimes, based on the Ghanaian culture, we have something called the family head. And the family head usually would make decisions. And that is a leadership position that he holds. So anything that's going on in the family goes through... The family head. The family head. Yeah. Um, an example is families might be getting a divorce. Uh, a couple might be getting a divorce. But if you're under that family head, you must go to the family head and ask about where the child should be. If the, the, the man and the husband, the husband and wife cannot decide, excuse me, cannot decide or come up with a decision as to what needs to be done is best to go to the family head and if the family head recognizes or sees that they're fighting over custody of the child or the children he comes in and make a decision and say you know what none of you are going to have the kids because the children are not a possession they're not someone to say it's mine, it's mine. The children belongs to the family, to the lineage. So for that reason, that family head makes a decision and says, your child 
can go to your brother, to your sister, to the grandparents. You two go figure out what you want to do. But don't, don't make this a battle between the child or between you and the children or the, or the two of you. And I find that when you go to him, talking to this family head under normal circumstances, children are not to speak to their family head. It's the adults that usually do the talking. But growing up as a child, when an event happened in my life and I saw that the decisions that were being made for me, I felt was not right. And I wanted to be heard. And at 11, I think 11 or 12 years old, I felt bold enough to go to the family head. <laughs> and it was, it's undone, I mean, it's, no, it's never, it's unheard of again. First of all, the culture is that children are to be seen and not heard. Yeah. So where do I get off to feel the need to go and speak to the family head? But yes, I went to him <clears throat> thinking I needed to advocate for myself. Yeah. So I went to him and to my surprise, I have never spoken to this man like that before, one-on-one. -on -one. He gave me an audience and allowed me to sit down and he spoke to me and asked me to tell him what was on my mind and he heard me out and as soon as I finished speaking to him and telling him what I needed and what I felt was wrong and I felt was not right for me to my surprise after this day it blows my mind how he was able to hear me out and then agreed with me <laughs> with my decision and how I felt I needed to be taken care of and who I needed to stay with. He made that decision with me and said, you're right. Don't go and stay with the person you don't want to go to. Stay with the person that you want to stay with. Yeah. You have no idea the impact of that. On your life subsequently. Yes. At 11 or 12 years old. Yeah. I mean, with regard to the whole uh, family head in Ghana thing, mm -hmm. I understand, especially just, there are, very, there are other places with similar structures mm -hmm. that you can see, even in schools. Mm -hmm. Schools are greatly changing but they uh, for the longest time schools had the same thing where mm -hmm. children were children teachers are teachers don't yeah. talk to the teachers mm -hmm. right but i think that's because there's like a clash of uh like the t technology one upset everything <laughs> yes right which is why <laughs> i think that there are a lot of bad leaders in the world yes <laughs> so in your example of the family leader mm -hmm. that system was born out of a time when uh, experience and fact went hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Yes. And now, in this day and age, experience and fact can be two completely different things. Yes. Where someone as young as five can know a fact that completely contradicts experience in yes. a way that causes a conflict mm -hmm. that can't be resolved between uh, the older leader mm -hmm. I put leader in air quotations because like uh, back in the day leader mm -hmm. and old went hand in hand because yes. of that fact and experience thing mm -hmm. but now leader and old don't go hand in hand <laughs> right so in your situation you you had a guy who mm -hmm. had the right set of experiences yes in order to be a guiding leader yes right right now like we if we bring this all the way back to what we started with mm -hmm. about how people are taught mm -hmm. to be leaders mm -hmm. and what you saw on the playground with those kids. Mm -hmm. So people are taught to be these leadership is about these accomplishments and these accolades and being bossy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. When really and truly the concept of leadership, uh, if you think about it from an evolutionary standpoint, mm -hmm. would have adapted based on the fact that uh, experience and facts were only known 
by the oldest individual. Yes. And in order for the eldest individual to pass it on, you had to be quiet to listen. Yes, I because take there it was, in. Yeah, there was no way you would come in front of him and know something that... There was no way you could know more than him. No. Because it, 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 there was a time in which if you hadn't lived long, as long as this person has, mm -hmm. then there's no way you know as much as this person. Yes. But once we started writing things down, mm -hmm. I think that's when technology actually disrupted the whole thing. Yes. It wasn't now in the 20th century with computers, but it's when we started writing things down in books and on paper and on yes. cave walls. Yes. At that point, information... <laughs> And experience mm -hmm. became two separate things. Yes. Which allowed younger people to challenge older people. Yes, because they're going to go back and read it. <laughs> right. And it also caused like a disconnect between leadership mm -hmm. because people didn't realize that disconnect mm -hmm. and kept believing that uh, leadership was just the title. Mm. Right? Yes. It wasn't necessarily <clears throat> that combination of experience and fact. Mm -hmm. And a state of being, even. Right. Because, like, if we bring it back to, again, that idea of how do you get caught up in your leadership. Mm -hmm. Well, in flight or flight situations, regardless of if you're talking about leaderships or not, mm -hmm. when you're in a flight or flight situation, mm -hmm. you are caught up with your emotions. Your emotions lead you before your logic. Yes. Right? As a leader... Uh, and this is, I guess, what separates a good leader mm -hmm. from a regular leader. Mm -hmm. In any novel situation, yeah. let's just assume that you're approaching it with a fight-or-flight type mm -hmm. response. As yes. a human being is a biological machine, mm -hmm. novel situations are met with fight-or-flight because your body <laughs> has no idea how to process it. Yeah. And the best leaders are the people whose fight-or-flight responses are equally as calm as their logical responses. Yes, they're right? able to access uh, reasoning, yeah. knowledge, and and above all, decision making yeah. during that time. And I think that's crucial. Yeah. Um, sometimes I wonder if that's a skill to be learned or is it or is it something that a person's personality mandates? I don't know. If if it's something that's either nurtured or learned. I think it's a little bit of column A, column B. Mm -hmm. Like if you're lucky enough to have it from birth and you mm -hmm. never have to learn it. Mm -hmm. And then there is if you're lucky enough to not have it and recognize that you need it. You go on and you're lucky enough to be able to learn it. You do learn it. And then there's the person who is unfortunate in every sense of the word. Yes. Doesn't have it. Doesn't realize they need it. <laughs> and even when they do know that it's something they lack, they refuse to learn it. Yes. And at that point, I think you have a reckless leader in the <laughs> making. So, um, so it, it, that means, based on what you're saying and what I'm getting out of it, there has to be a sense of flexibility. In some ways, yeah. Yeah. And if there isn't flexibility, then the rigid person... Just stays the same. Yeah. It doesn't uh, even though they can become aware that they don't have it, they need to learn it, but they decide not to not to apply. Yeah. Any knowledge. And I think that's again, if we tie it back to the beginning, mm -hmm. old dogs don't learn new tricks. I wonder when <laughs> that statement came about mm -hmm. because that kept us from having that concept of leadership evolve as quickly as it should. Mm. Right? Because once you say old dogs don't learn new tricks and we all stick to that idea that the oldest person is the leader and then you come across some old people that have... The moment the world opened up, elders were no longer enough. Mm. Which is kind of a weird statement. It's not that they weren't enough, but they were good leaders as long as your world was limited to that village mm -hmm. or small town that you grew up in. Mm -hmm. But the moment the world became bigger than that, mm -hmm. they also needed to grow. But once you say an old dog can't learn new tricks and you still allow them to keep that title of leader, mm -hmm. you, that slowly creates this like two-pronged concept of leadership. The one yes. that we agree is reckless, where it's simply a title. 
And the one where we agree is what we aim for, Mm -hmm. which is now, I think, in this day and age, uh, a good leader is someone who uh, has the experience, Mm -hmm. has the knowledge and facts, because experience and knowledge and facts are no longer the same thing. Yeah, of course. And then they can put the two together and be a listener at the same time, Mm -hmm. right? Which is what that last part you said about your grandma. Yeah. Which is very, very important. Because I, I still can't remember who I heard this quote from. But I think that em- this emphasizes the need to be a good leader. Where it's like a good leader isn't someone who tells you what to do. It's someone who finds the people that want to do the job already. Mm-hmm. And assigns it to them. Mm-hmm. Right? In order to find those people, you need to listen. Yes. Right? You don't pigeonhole someone into a job they don't want. Yes. Right? You don't pigeonhole someone into a role they don't want. Mm-hmm. And you help people grow into the roles that they want to do already. Yes. Right? Which is what I feel like uh, that elder realized through your story. Because he could have forced you to go back. Yeah. But why put you in a place where you won't grow? Exactly. Right? Exactly. And... And I really appreciate his observation and listening skills to recognize that. Because I walked in thinking, he's not not even going to listen to me, but I'm going to give it a shot. (laughs) Yeah. I I think that's very telling of uh, how... Uh, uh, more uh, common <laughs> bad leaders are yes. in Ghanaian culture. <laughs> yes. Because all they see are just people to be beneath them to follow out their rules. Yes. <laughs> right? Like, chill, Especially a relationship between adults. I, I think it's changing. Yeah. But that old relationship between adults and children mm-hmm. where children were just there to listen to adults and nothing more yeah if you opened your mouth what were you thinking <laughs> <laughs> how dare you use your voice for anything besides what i told you to yes <laughs> so it's changing drastically yeah but I, I i think the fact that you walked in not expecting him to mm. listen at all yeah is proof of that like uh uh, poor con- what what that is proof that that poor concept of leadership is so common, and we all just accept it too. Yeah, that's the hard part. Yeah, it's just it's amazing. We just accept it, and and it's so funny how it trickled down. Yeah, to so many aspects of each people's lives, and you look at the situation, and you sometimes hold your head. You're like, why? Right. And then the question is, like, how are we supposed to grow as leaders Mm -hmm. if those are the examples we see on the Mm. daily? If that's the more common idea of leadership, how do you break out and find that uncommon, right? Luckily, you came across that guy. Yes. And like I was telling you how my grandmother, her lessons that she taught me on advice that she would give me about leadership was always like she was always very calm and quiet she was always listening to everyone what they had to say whether they were wrong or not she was open to hearing them just giving them an understanding that you can still speak and she heard and after hearing everybody before she makes a decision. And even when she makes a decision, it's always very polite. She was always very polite about bringing up what needs to be addressed. So she doesn't go into it attacking anyone's perspective. She just says, I understand what is going on. And when you said this, you said this, I hear you. Based on what I've heard and what needs to be taken care of, this is it and that level of calm and 
creating an open dialogue for everyone to have a say was beautiful. That's why when it went to the family head, I guess maybe also because she wrote off on me. Yes, and I think she was always able to teach me. I felt confident to go and talk to her, even though I was doubtful. Yeah. But I guess because I've seen that from her, I thought, well, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> gave you hope to believe <laughs> that other possible leaders exist. Yes, the, because she showed me that it's possible. Yeah. And she's a matriarch. Yeah. Yeah. So, based on that, I think if, you know, those two have forever changed my idea of leadership. That the thing I get though now is that when I go near an environment where people understand leadership to be the order, give people, to, you know, order everybody around and be the boss and, and, and give, you know, the order and everybody should just be beneath me. When I come across those individuals and they, they see my way of understanding leadership or wanting to be led, they find me out. And sometimes people see that way of leadership as being weak. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, I also know the difference, like... As a person, mm -hmm. I've had opportunities to be a leader. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes I've been a good leader. And then sometimes I've been that leader. Hey, 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 hey. What's up? <laughs> uh, sometimes I've been the leader who's only given orders. Mm -hmm. And, like, my short-sightedness came out of, like, a sense of desperation. Mm -hmm. It's easier in sports to see that. Because mm -hmm. on days where, like, I don't know what's going on, but I walk into a game, even if the game is going poorly, mm -hmm. I'm able to communicate with my teammates mm -hmm. and listen to what they're saying about where they're... Like, the first thing you realize is, like, even though we're all standing on the field, we're all not seeing the same thing, mm -hmm. right? But on days where, I don't know what it is, but I just have this desperation to win... I can't hear I can't hear them out at all. If anybody if I if I like I play soccer pretty mm -hmm. avidly. So if I give you a pass and you make a mistake and I'm trying to tell you that you made a mistake but you're arguing with me and I I'm I'm just desperate to win. I don't care what your argument is. You should have done what I thought you were going to do. Mm -hmm. But on days where I'm more patient. Mhm. Mm and I'm capable of accepting the fact that what I thought was going to happen mm -hmm. wasn't wasn't going to happen. I find I'm far more successful. Oh wow! Right, and far more patient, and I feel I feel better as a, I feel like I grew too, mm -hmm. which is important. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, you're right. It's amazing. It is pretty amazing. Yeah, to pay attention and listen to what is going on because that's what creates the lesson that you wanted to uh, share across. And for you to get, and then they get to. Yeah. And in a nutshell, that's what leadership is. Yeah. It's a learning process. It's not about somebody ordering it, pointing fingers. Um, it's uplifting the group or the individual that you're leading. And to the point that they... That, that individual is not really looking at you like a, a, a head, but more of a guide. A guide. A guide that you're learning how to lead through them. And they're also learning from you. So it's a learning process. Yeah. And that's what I get from uh, being a leader. And I thank you for uh, this. No, for sure. Thank you for having both of us here. Yes. <laughs> Thank, thanks for the baby being patient with us, too. I and uh, I appreciate everybody who listened. Thank you for joining us on Love, Forgive, Live. I appreciate you. Have an amazing week. Those who want to write to us, of course, the address is L U V 
love the number four give live at gmail